Where do you do your retreat? What location do you choose? And how do you choose your location? Well, that can be a pretty tricky prospect. So I'm going to give you a few tips today on how I go through choosing my location. And I highly, highly recommend, if you haven't signed up already, to join us for the training on Friday, where we're going to be digging so much more into creating your retreat. Now, if you can't make it on Friday, I recommend registering anyways, because you will get a replay. We know that the timing is not great for our community is global. So it cannot, 12 noon on Friday cannot possibly be good for everyone everywhere in the world. And we do understand that. So do sign up and do come. You're going to learn a lot. Okay. That said, let's get back to locations. So for me, I think one of the most important things you can do to not have a boiled chicken boring retreat is to give some thought to matching your location to the theme of your retreat. So for example, a lot of people when they think retreat immediately think of a beachy location, something really laid back and pretty, you know, just kind of mellow place. And I can tell you that for a lot of retreats, maybe that would be fine. But if you really want to stand out, you have to do something more these days than just have your retreat at a location on a beach. And this is why when you're trying to sell your retreat, you are building value right into your retreat. What builds value is offering something to your people that they can't get someplace else. If they feel like they can go to a beach location and do what you're doing on your retreat on their own, then why would they want to pay you that extra money? Extra money meaning, obviously, if you're pricing your retreat, you're going to put your expenses in there, right? So they're paying for your room and your food and your flights and your whatever. And they don't need to do that. If you are not offering something over the top experiential and transformational. Now I get it. You can do something, you know, on a beach and it could be deeply transformational, but I can tell you from experience, I've been doing this since 2000. That's 18 years of retreats. If you do something that is deeply experiential, if you actually think about creating an experience for your people, that is going to make your retreat sell out so much faster than if you put together something that looks like every other thing out there. And you see this especially with um, yoga retreats, right? They all kind of look the same. It's just like a yoga retreat here, or a yoga retreat there. And that to me is a boiled chicken retreat. I can't tell what one I should go to. If the location only is making my determination like, oh, I want to go to a visa, so I'm going to pick this trip. That is absolutely the worst reason for somebody to come on your retreat. You want people to come on your retreat because they like you, your work, what you're teaching, your style of teaching. They like what they're going to come away with and they want to work with you afterwards because that's the whole idea. If there's no continuity in your business from your retreats, like for example, a retreat ends and that's it, you've just wasted your time and you've really lost the income potential you could have if you would have given some more thought about how you created your retreat and what you were trying to accomplish on your retreat. So <clears throat> location is really critical when it comes to making something special. So another thing that I look into when I'm creating my retreats is I build everything around a mythology. And so by that, I mean every location has something about it, a story, something that's happened before. Um, we can pick something like uh, Greece, let's say. So there's all kinds of mythological things that have happened there. And based on what you're teaching, you could possibly choose a location 
that aligns specifically with that mythology. Now, let's say you just want to do something in your hometown because that's where a lot of folks start, right? And if you're just beginning and you're doing your first retreat, you might be thinking, okay, I'm not going international. I need to keep this simple, Sherry. I not going around the world and trying to sell that out, okay? I want to do something local. And that's great because even locally, there are different mythologies in your own country, in different parts of your country, in your state, um, in your hometown. And there's activities that you can put in that are going to still make it very experiential. So it's about cre getting creative and the more clarity you have on your retreat theme and what you actually want to share with your people, in other words, what is the promise of your retreat, that is going to make it so much easier to get clear on where to go. Because a lot of people say to us all the time, gee, Sherry, I have no idea where I should do my retreat. Do you have any good ideas? And I'm like, no, I don't have good ideas for you to just pick something out of a bag because that's not how I choose my location. I wouldn't say, well, you know, Ben DeVivey in North Carolina is great. Well, maybe it is great, but not for what you're doing. So no, I don't know a great location for your retreat. What we need is to know what you are sharing on your retreat. What is the main takeaway or promise from the retreat? And will that location have some activities or you can create some activities that are going to support what you're teaching so there's that really great alignment? That said, I mean, you could do a retreat in a villa. You can do it in a hotel. You can do it in a and b There's lots of different ways of doing a retreat. You could do glamping which is glamorous camping. That's really fun. You can do almost anything if you get really creative. And that is what I find to be one of the more exciting aspects. I mean, of course, I love the retreat itself and seeing people's faces change and seeing how that evolves. But I, I actually really enjoy the planning part. I love to think about, you know, those activities that I can create that are going to really help teach what I'm doing. So just a really simple um, example could be uh, we had a Christian retreat that was based on Jesus's teachings and so he spent his time 30 days or 40 days in the desert, however long that was. I'm sorry, I'm Jewish, so I don't have that mythology totally nailed down, so I apologize. But he spent time in the desert. And so what we did is we worked with that retreat leader to create a retreat in the Sedona area as the desert. So everyone went into the desert in that retreat. And so they worked on their beliefs and inner conflicts and forgiveness issues. And it was really quite lovely because it mirrored um, Christ's teachings and it was really beautiful. And that was something that was, the person was from the US and they did it in the US. So it was more local for them. And the retreat just blew people away because of how it was all tied together. It was sim simply, amazing. So that is the kind of thing I'd like you all to think about and to go in a little deeper and imagine something more than just, I'm going to do a workshop in a pretty place, because that's what most people do when they're choosing their location. Now, if I'm doing a live event, like we do live events where we teach for three days, Okay, that doesn't matter where I do it because my people are mostly in a hotel all day. But the retreat formulation is different. And we're going to be talking a lot, a lot about this. And I've got great examples in the webinar training coming up. So if you're looking to start your first retreat or even 
if you're doing retreats and need some new ideas and I would come because you're going to definitely take away something. So I, I highly recommend it. And by the way, the link is right above if you want to register. So these are just some things about locations. I'd love you guys to post below this video where you're thinking of doing your retreat and why. Why did you pick that? What kinds of activities do you feel that location is going to add to your retreat to make it experiential and fun? OK, and I would love to hear that because I know so many of you are doing amazing things. This community is fantastic. There's so many different kinds of retreats that people are doing like it blows me away. It's like humbling to see the creativity and the talent in this group. So, you know, for me and Megan and my whole team, we want to see you succeed. We want to see your retreats sell out like this. We want to see you make good money on your retreats because you, you have to make a living. You know that you have to do that. Your transformation is worth something and you have to value yourself. So let's talk more about this on uh, the webinar training on Friday. I'm going to pack pop back into the group tomorrow and give you some more tips. So watch out for tomorrow's Facebook live stream. And we love you guys and appreciate you and are so glad you're in our group and community. And if there's anything we can do for you, please let us know. Make sure you come on Friday and do post the location of your retreat underneath, underneath this video. Okay, everybody. Love you. Bye.